All right. Happy Monday. Good to see everybody. I appreciate the late night on Saturday night. Um, looks like we'll have one more late night, I guess, UW week. Uh, that kickoff is at 7 p.m. Seems like we're, uh, we're getting ready there uh, for a sellout. Looks like we're at about 47,000 tickets out already for that game. So that would only leave us about 3,800 tickets available between now and a week from Saturday. So that'll be our next home game. Uh, right now, all focus is on Stanford and uh, the task we have in front of us. And we know it's a, always a tough task to go on the road. Uh, this is our first conference game. They've already had a conference game. They've gone through that experience. So far, we have not. Um, they're a very well-coached team. I think Coach Taylor does a great job. You could see uh, the type of program he built at Sac State and now the type of program that he's trying to build currently at Stanford. Uh, so we know we have our work cut out for us with a very good football team, just beginning preparations on that uh, last evening and then this morning. And uh, so I'll be a little bit uh, far away uh, from knowing too much about them right now, but uh, did enjoy reviewing our tape and seeing some of the good that occurred in our game on Saturday evening. When you accumulate 544 yards of offense and average 8.5 yards per play, do you expect to have more than 31 points at the end of the night? Yeah, I think that the way the game went, um, I would imagine if we wanted to end the final drive, we could have kept going in the final drive. Uh, probably would have gotten us some points. We got a field goal blocked, um, and then we had a turnover. Um, you know, I, I think that we were uh, we we were five for five in the red zone, so it wasn't that we weren't, and four of them were touchdowns. So we did miss out an opportunity in the red zone one time. But um, you know, I don't know. I think probably most of the time you'd have more than that. But uh, the way the game was going, it was a situation where. You know, you, you, you get 10 more points maybe uh, if you do a couple things better and then probably sit there at 41. Uh, usually you get uh, the short fields are based on turnovers. Uh, we got one, and when we got that one turnover, we scored a touchdown. Uh, a lot of times if those happen earlier in the games, you get a multitude of turnovers, and then you get a lot of short fields, and then you'll be able to start piling up some points. Uh, we had to go the long way. Uh, and when we had to go the long way, I think we had 15 explosive plays out of 69 snaps or something to that effect, but you still didn't have enough time or enough yards to get as many points as we all would hope. Uh, 64 total plays uh, split evenly. Is that by design or is that just how the game went down? Run pass, you mean, split evenly. Uh, I, you know, we the game went a certain direction that we were able to um, stay very balanced. We... As I've said before, we really like our running backs, and I think we have really good set of running backs. Sometimes the games don't allow you to um, stay with the run as much as you want. Sometimes the games allow you to run the ball more than you ever expected to run it. Uh, we would love to be in that world of a 35 pass, 35 pass attempts, 35 rush attempts, 32, 32, whatever it might be, you knowing the third down is primarily pass. I believe we only had 10 third downs or something to that effect, maybe 11 or two. You know, we were somewhere in the 50% range on third down. Uh, we ran the ball a couple times on third down, um, probably one or two at the end of the game, and then that one time on the third and four um, in our own end zone that Mike Wiley got the first down. But you'd love to be able to have that balance, to be able to mix some runs in on third down. That allows you to kind of be 50-50 regarding how the defensive line and the linebackers complement each other? Yeah, you, know, you know, the the most important thing we've seen is that rotation has really continued to help us. Uh, so we don't just have four D linemen or five D linemen playing in games. We have eight to ten defensive linemen. So when you're able to start getting them in and out, um, they're able to come in fresh, you know, and not just fresh physically, but fresh mentally. Like they're able to get a few reps on the sideline, take a few reps, be next to their coach, you know, see it from a different perspective and then go in with a little bit more of clarity of what's happening. And then the linebackers, you know, we, we played Flo and Manu. Then we played, you know, Daniel was in there. And then obviously as the game went on, Kamu and uh, Tay Brown. But the communication that goes on between the linebackers and the front uh, is critical to the success of the team. And I think a lot of it starts with Jacob Manu 
and his ability to communicate with the whole front four, as well as Dalton Johnson and his ability to communicate with Jacob and the front four on exactly how he wants the defense set. Yeah, two questions. One offensive side, just to kind of follow on what Michael was asking. Do you feel going into Pac-12 you're going to need to score more points uh, to have a chance to win ball games? And then with Dalton Johnson, uh, there were several plays where he came all the way from the backside to affect plays in the backfield. Just so speak to his vision with the city out there. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the first question is, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I'd love to see. We'll, we'll score more. We, I think we're averaging 31 points a game. Uh, I think we're a top 10 or 15 offense in the country right now, three weeks into the season. Um, I think we'll probably score more if, as we, you know, get to a situation where there's probably a touchdown in each game we left out there, and there's probably going to be another touchdown that could show up in each game based on a takeaway or something to that effect. But uh, our offense is clicking at a pretty good level right now, and uh, we certainly are in a good place regarding yards per play, regarding our uh, run game and pass game, the balance, and uh, our red zone offense. So when, when that's in a good spot, we have a good chance to, to be successful. Uh, you give away too many possessions, time of possession, some of those things affected some scoring. Uh, certainly the NAU game, we, get, we had that one hour break. Um, and then also with Mississippi State with the turnovers. Uh, to answer the next question about Dalton Johnson, Dalton is playing um, explosive. He's playing with incredible efforts, which is permitting him to, to just chase the ball. And I think what some of the things that we're noticing is when he's on the backside and he sees the runaway or sees the throw, he's very willing to give that 100% effort. And he and Gunnar Maldonado – um, show them specifically, Traden Stukes, Isaiah Taylor, all those guys, uh, they are chasing that ball, and that's something that Coach Nansen, Coach Akina, Coach Cecil, and company have really emphasized throughout the whole offseason. And then you listen to Coach Richardson on the practice field screaming at the backside corners to get to the ball, and that's what we're trying to really do a good job of. What goes into the, into the decision to make a change of running back for a given, given series? You know, how, do you, how do you make the call? So who comes in next and why? Jay, I can't tell you that. Uh, it goes into a lot of things. It goes into what we're calling. It goes into um, where they are physically, where they, you know, how many runs they've had. Uh, it goes into... There's a rotation that we set ahead of time on how we want to make sure we get different backs, different touches. Uh, there's certain plays that we call for certain backs, but a lot of times it's just a matter of uh, who's up, who's up at that time. And uh, we, try, we try to do the best we can to get the rotation as, uh, as clean as we can get it, getting guys in and out quickly. But there's always going to be some challenges there. And then obviously with – with Mike, he does so many things well. Uh, we always lean on him at certain times in the game. Where do you think the team is at this point compared to entering Pac-12 play last year? Uh, we're really healthy at this point. Uh, I, can, I can say that Raymond Polito has been cleared to practice uh, full contact. So going into – the Pac-12 this year, and I don't remember exactly, Brian, how it ended after the North Dakota State game of a year ago, but um, we are 100% healthy as a football team, so that's a great start. We have 9 of 11 returners uh, in our system on offense, which we didn't have a year ago. Remember, a year ago, most of those guys were going into their first Pac-12 game as a Wildcat, where now our offense is really going into their second season as Wildcats. Uh, so that's a big difference in terms of their comfort level offensively. Defensively, we're going into uh, the game with uh, a lot more confidence than we went into um, probably Pac-12 play a year ago with a defense that has a lot of energy and enthusiasm surrounding it right now. And a lot of things about defensive football is – do you walk in with confidence? Do you walk in with swagger? Do you feel good about the way you're playing? And they're now in year two of a system rather than week four of a system. So the experience has really um, changed for us, and that's where I'm more, more confident 
than before regarding um, where we are and where we're sitting right now. The length that uh, Ephesians and Takari have was really evident uh, in this game at the, you know, the catch point or in those contested balls. As someone who has coached wide receivers and still does, what challenge do they present to opposing wideouts when they're in that position? Yeah, their, their body uh, length is, I mean, we're, we're, we've tried a lot to kind of emulate our defensive structure around the Seahawks of, you know, the that let's call it 2014 to 2018 era, that time where you had Richard Sherman and you had corners with great length. Um, Browner is another one. Uh, Camp Chancellor was a hard hitting, strong safety. You know, those type, those bodies uh, that allowed you to play a lot of single high defense, meaning you're allowed to, you can match them up with a corner and feel that their length allows you to protect against the go ball because it's challenging to complete deep throws down the field with high arc to it when your six foot four uh, defender is on top of your receiver. Uh, and just the ability to play through a ball and the ability to be able to play high point a ball is something that Takario and Ephesians and even Stukes has good length. Um, I know he plays a lot inside for us, but he can go outside as well. And the three of them on the field, you're talking about 6-2 plus, obviously, with two six four corners on the outside. It, it, if we can continue to be physical, which Ephesians and Takari are, are showing more and more of, then you're able to play with that type of length and be physical on the outside. It becomes a far greater challenge if you're coaching on the offensive side of the ball, as we do every day against them. Um, and uh, certainly, they, they're getting better every day. Yeah, from the end of last season to now, how has Jacob Monty grown in terms of his ability to just dissect the offense pre-snap? Yeah, you know, the Jacob Manu story is always a good one because it, it's almost hard to believe he's still only a true sophomore. I feel like we talk so much about Jacob and his growth because his growth is like happening week to week, not just, um, wow, I remember back three years ago when – He's really, you know, because of the fact that his first start was week three of the season at one year ago, we're really watching his growth happen every single week. And with Jacob, what I've noticed the most of, he's one of those people that is, he's like a plant you keep watering. He wants more information. He wants to learn about offensive football. He wants to be able to be the type of player that can recognize things that happen before they happen and utilize formations to his advantage. Uh, so I've seen incredible growth with Jacob each week, not just uh, from last year or this year, but obviously having an offseason with us, which he didn't have a year ago. He didn't come with the other guys. Remember, he wasn't here in the spring where T-Mac, Kean, and Noah were. Uh, so our first experience with Jacob was in training camp, whereas now we had him for that whole offseason after being a starter and now seeing where he's going. I think uh, he'll continue to grow. Just two, two quick questions. First, what do you make of Stanford's upset loss to Sacramento State? And then also, um, with last week, the biggest focus for you was playing clean football for your team. What is the biggest thing you're looking for against Stanford? Yeah, oh, first of all, I mean, Sac State, I think, is 13-1 and one in their last 14 games. Uh, I, I don't know anymore in college football about upsets and not – I mean, I think college football is up for grabs every single week. Um, we saw – what, Northern Illinois um, beat Boston College. Then we saw Boston College. And then Florida State beat LSU. And then Florida State and Boston College were 31-29. I think that just the way college football goes right now, you're dealing with 18- to 22-year-old kids uh, on a given Saturday. I think Sac State's a good team. I think Stanford's a good team. Uh, regarding us, this week is more of the same. Regarding protecting the football, regarding playing clean football, uh, winning the turnover battle, we've yet to do that. Uh, we were even this past week at 1-1. Um, and then really, <laughs> uh, I would say we need to be able to, all three phases, um, take a step, one more step forward. See if we can be better in each phase of the game. And if we're a little bit better in each phase of the game, it'll give us a great chance uh, to come back home uh, the, with the victorious. Thank you.